guys, Mr. Backwork here. This is part two of lesson 3.2. We are going to graph and recognize logarithmic functions. We're going to recognize, evaluate, and graph natural logarithmic functions. And then we're gonna do a little bit of modeling and solving some real life problems with logarithmic functions. In these first couple examples, we are going to be graphing out some logarithmic functions. So this first one says f of x equals log base four of x. But I'm actually gonna rewrite this as an exponential equation to help me out a little bit. So remember, rewriting these logarithms as exponential as that was kind of the stuff we did in our last video. So this becomes four to the y equals x. And I'm gonna use that to help me fill out this x and y chart so that I can plot out some points. I'm actually going to plug in some y values right here on this four and end up getting back an x value. So I'm thinking if I plugged in a y value of zero up here, well, four to the zero power would give me one as that x value. If I plugged in a first power for this y value, well, four to the first power is just four. If I plugged in two, we'd get an x value of 16, but that's not gonna show up on our graph. So maybe let's start heading the other direction. Maybe we plug in negative one. Well, four to the negative first power ends up being one fourth. If we tried negative two, four to the negative second power is one sixteenth. So now I'm gonna start plotting out some of these points. So we've got the point one zero. So I'm gonna go over one space, put a dot. Then we've got the point four one, so we'll go over four up one. Now 16 two doesn't really show up on our graph. So I'm gonna go to the one fourth and negative one. So you have to go over one fourth of a space and down one space. So about right there. Next one says 1 16th, negative two. So we've gotta move along that x-axis very, very little and then go down two. Now drawing out this graph, it's almost like there's an asymptote running along this y equals zero line. So our graph is gonna get really, really close to that but never cross it. And then our graph turns, it's gotta hit this point at four one and then it kind of flattens out as we move off to the right hand side. Next example says we're gonna graph out f of x equals log base three of x plus one. And again, I'm gonna rewrite this as an exponential equation. So this would say three to the y equals x plus one. But I'm gonna get x all by itself. I'm gonna subtract this one over. So we get three to the y minus one equals x. And then I'm gonna do what I did on the last example where I actually plug in values for y and get back answers for x. So I'm thinking if we plugged in zero for our y value, well three to the zero power is one, and one minus one is zero, so we've got the point zero, zero, and I'm gonna go ahead and plot that out right away. If we plug in a value of one for our y value, well three to the first power is three, minus one, we get two as our x value. If we plug in two for our y value, well three squared is nine, minus one is eight, but again, this one doesn't show up on the graph at all, so let's maybe head the other direction. Let's try negative one. Well, three to the negative first power would be one over three, and then if we subtract one from that, we get negative two thirds. If we plug in negative two, well, three to the negative second power is one ninth, and if we subtract one from that, we get negative eight ninths. So let's plot out some of these other points. We've got two one, um, eight two doesn't show up on the graph, so let's head the other direction. Negative two thirds, negative one, so right about there. Now we're really, really close to negative one here, but we're not quite there, but we are down at negative two. So now it's like our asymptote shifted over to the left one space, and that should make sense because of this plus one inside of the parentheses. So our graph is gonna come up right tight to this negative one x value, turn and hit the origin, and then again start to flatten out as we move off to the right hand side. Now just like we had a natural exponential function, we also have a natural logarithm, and it's a base e logarithm, so we could just read it as log base e of x, or we've actually got another notation that we can use for this, it's ln of x, meaning the natural log of x. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our calculator to evaluate a couple of natural log equations. We've got this f of x equals the natural log of x plus one, and we're gonna plug in three different x values to see what we get back for answers. 
So here's my calculator. If you look along the left hand side, there's that LN button. That's what we're going to be using. First thing I'm going to plug in for that X value was 73.25. And then we've got the plus one on the end. So we should get 5.294 if we round that off. Plugging in our next X value, it's 0.4. And then we're going to add one on the end. So we get 0.08 if we round that one off and our last x value that we said we were going to plug in was negative 2 plus 1 on the end and we get a non-real answer in our last video we talked about properties of general logarithmic functions but these properties also hold true for natural logs all this is is a base e logarithm so if we take the natural log of 1, the answer is going to be 0, because if we take that e base, raise it to the 0 power, we're still going to get 1 as an answer. If we take the natural log of just e, we're going to get 1, because if we take that e base and raise it to the first power, the answer is e. That inverse property still holds true. If we do the natural log of e to the x, we're just going to get x as our answer. Or if we take e and raise it to a natural log of x power, again, we're still just going to get x. Natural logs also have a one-to-one -one property. So if we've got the natural log of x equals the natural log of y, then those x and y things also have to be equal. So we're going to run through a few examples of just simplifying down some expressions. First one says we've got the natural log of e to the fifth. Well, we just got done saying that natural log and e exponentials are inverses of each other. So this natural log cancels out with this e, and all we've got left over is the five. Similarly with this next one, e to this natural log power, those things cancel each other out and all we've got left is the 8. If we're looking at 15 times the natural log of 1, well on the last page we just said that the natural log of 1 is 0. So if we take 15 times 0, we get 0. Last one, we've got the natural log of e divided by 6. Well, if we take a natural log of just e, the answer is going to be 1, and we've still got that over 6. The last example in this video is an application example. So it says we were dealing with some students in a math class. They were given an exam and then retested monthly with an equivalent exam. The average scores are given by this memory model f of t equals 78 minus 17 log of t plus 1 and we're going to use 0 through 12 for those t values and those are going to be in months so first thing we want to do is figure out the average score on the original test so what that means is we're going to be looking at a t value of 0 it's the very first time they took this test so all we have to do is plug 0 into this function f of 0 is equal to 78 minus 17 times the log of well in here we'd have 0 plus 1 which is 1 now remember, if we take the log of 1, that's just 0. So this is 78 minus 17 times 0. So that's just going to be 78. So the average score the first time the test was given was a 78. Now we're going to look at what the average score was after 11 months. So we look at f of 11. So that's 78 minus 17 times the log of, well, if we take 11 plus 1, that's 12. Now I'm going to plug this one into my calculator. So 78 minus 17 log of 12, hit enter, and after 11 months have gone by, the average score is a 59.7 if we round that off. That's going to be it for this video. Please remember to fill out the Google form linked in the description down below, and thanks for watching.